All right, Wagwan Piftings. Today we're talking about Python. Okay, there's no way to make Python cool. So I just wanted to give you a quick update about EasyBPY, which is a project that I started some years ago, but it's now fallen out of mm, sync with Blender. I suppose that's a way to put it. For those of you that don't know, and maybe if you haven't touched the Python side of Blender, which most people haven't, EasyBPY is like an abstraction module. It's a library. It's a collection of functions that makes it a bit easier to access things in Blender through the Python API. I know, I know it's a bit boring and believe me, it's boring working on it, but I wanted to make this video because I just wanted to say that I've started trying to bring it up to date a little bit with Blender 4.2. Are we on 4.2? Yeah, we're on 4.2.2. Yeah, I'm starting to bring it up to date a little bit. I'm doing it progressively and slowly. So I just wanted to make a note in case there are some people out there that are using it because people are still picking it up. They're still downloading it from the GitHub repo or grabbing it from Gumroad or Blender Market where it's available for $1. So if you're brand new to this project, because I haven't spoken about it much recently, the reason for making it was because I went through a phase where I was very interested in making generators in Blender. Some of you will know this, the mech generator, the space station generator, the city scatter tool, and biogen, of course, the biogen add-on. And it became a nice idea just to have a way of quickly writing out little draft scripts because when it comes to Python in Blender one of the more annoying things isn't even doing the complex algorithms for cool generators or any kind of funky art generated with Python. The most annoying thing was the simple stuff. Selecting an object, moving it to a collection, deleting it, parenting it, all that kind of thing. It's because Blender is kind of, I don't want to say missing because I think it's also kind of by design, a usability layer in the Python API. What I mean by that is with most of software and especially game engines you have a kind of layer of code where you can access anything with its code path right so in blender python it'll be something like bpy.data.meshes.this dot dot that or the other it's like you're following an address to get somewhere with most softwares that have high level apis there's usually a layer above that that just kind of cuts out that address section so instead of finding an object by going through the whole directory the whole data path to get to it there would just be a usability function like get object that takes a name or something so it kind of just makes it simpler to use now i think there have been different attempts to do this with Blender. Easy BPY was my personalized one and the design of it didn't resonate with everyone because I did it all in just one file and some people really wanted it to be many different files for different areas of Blender but I made it first and foremost for myself and I use it in my own add-ons. The Serpens Visual Scripting add-on by Joshua Kanalba also supports Easy BPY, I believe it still does and a lot of people have ended up using it in their work. I still get help requests from people but obviously Blender is this constantly moving thing and we get new features and updates quite quickly which means projects like that tend to fall out of line pretty quickly because the Blender API will change. I always had this mental roadblock because EasyBPY is quite a large thing for one person to manage and work on because it is inherently, as we know, freaking boring. Python is boring. Sorry. I know a lot of people want to say code is fun, right? I don't see the actual code as the fun bit. I see what you can make with the code as the fun bit. So it's kind of like this means to an end for enjoyment. Maybe some people do love the code and we just have different types of brains. So the idea of I need to update this for the newest version of Blender always felt like a kind of depressing thing to do, sit down for several days with this one file to update it to a version of Blender that will be redundant maybe next week. You know, so it seemed like a bit of a bad idea. So what I've done now is I've taken a look back through it. Instead of updating it progressively, I'm just updating it line by line, because even if individual functions in the module go out of date. The module itself still loads into Blender. You can still use all the other functions, the ones that do work. So for myself and for anyone else that ends up helping out with the project, next to every function name in the code, I've put a little comment with some brackets. And inside of these brackets, I or anyone else will put the version of Blender the function was last successfully tested on. What this means is over time, I can go to the file, test a function, one if I'm really lazy or a few if I'm feeling better, and then just make a note, say, okay, 4.2, 4.2, 4.2, or 4.3, etc. Save it then update it. GitHub will be updated before like Gumroad and Blender Market. I think they'll be updated less frequently. What it means is kind of doing it progressively like that is a less daunting way of doing things. To go along with this, I've also added a blend file to the repo. So this blend file is what I'm using to do the testing. And it effectively, I can actually just open this up for you. It effectively just contains the interactive Python console, the info screen, and some helper text, just as a bit of a guide with things that you can copy and paste into the console just to speed up the process. Because sometimes importing and reloading modules in side of Blender is a bit of a weird thing. So this just kind of helps me keep on top of that. Now, like I said, I know the Python side of Blender is the kind of less commonly used. Obviously, people want to use Blender for all the exciting stuff, which I also love too. It's definitely more fun to work with the exciting stuff. But if you are interested in getting started with Blender in Python, wait, 
with Python in Blender rather, then I do have an old crash course video, which is still mostly applicable. There may be one or two changes, but it's a very popular video. A lot of people have gone started with it. And then I can also recommend Viktor Stepanov as another channel, otherwise known as CG Python, who has a lot of exercises with Python in Blender on their channel. And they also had a sponsored segment on this channel as well in the past. Victor, really cool person. So I just wanted to give you this update. If you made it this far through the video, put a little code related emoji, maybe someone at a laptop or just a laptop. You can sign up as a Patreon if you want to support this and all of my other work or a YouTube member and patrons and YouTube members have access to some exclusive videos through codisold.online slash members. And of course, codisold.online slash store for all of my add-ons and resources. Please feel free to check out Afterglow or Hex Scatter. That's a popular one at the moment. Oh, by the way, I heard that they might be bringing in image input sockets to the shader editor. Just a little thing on the grapevine. There are probably some Blender devs watching going, wait, are we? <laughs> I've heard that some people might be working on some way to get that working. Oh, and maybe more importantly, if you want to be actually notified of future content on this channel, then go to the subscribe button and set it to all instead of personalized. Otherwise, you won't really get notified. So yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. I'll chip away at EasyBPY over time, and I will see you next time.